Webcomic awards are pretty weird. Actually, awards in general are pretty weird. They can only shine a light on so many projects in a given year. So many great creators and great webcomics go unrecognized. But those awards can be really helpful as a way to promote our webcomics and to get more readers. So here's why you could, and maybe should, consider submitting your webcomic for consideration. Hi, my name is Steve Conley. I'm a web cartoonist and have been for a very, very long time. Recently, I found out that my webcomic, The Middle Age, has received a 2021 Eisner nomination in the category of Best Webcomic. To say I was surprised would be a massive understatement. 2020, for me, and I think for most people, was a pretty awful year. And to get an Eisner nomination for the work I did in that year is just stunning. I am floored. We're going to look at the major awards and what we need to know in order to have our work considered for them. We're going to look at the Eisner Awards, the NCS or Rubin Awards, the Ignatz Awards, the Harvey Awards, and the Ringo Awards. There'll be links in the doobly-doo below. Before we begin, please stick around to the end of the video where I'm going to be giving a shout out to a webcomic that I think deserves a bit more love. So let's begin. Now a little bit about the awards in general. Almost all of them share some features, and so you'll notice that the description of each one of these awards gets a little bit shorter as we go along because I have to kind of explain, kind of front load a lot of information with the first few and then it gets easier as we go along. But generally speaking, each one of these awards have a nomination period. That's the time when nominees are selected. And then a general voting period from that ballot of nominees, a winner is selected. So we're going to go into the quirks of each one of these awards, and we're going to start with the Eisner Award. Now, the Eisner Awards are part of Comic-Con International, the big San Diego Comic-Con. The Eisner Awards get their name from Will Eisner, who was a legendary cartoonist, mostly known for his work on the comic strip, The Spirit. And when I say comic strip, it was a full page in the newspaper. It was, or a full section in the newspaper. The guy was doing some amazing work. His layouts and typography are just awesome. Now, the Eisner Awards have two categories relevant to what we do. They've got a best webcomic category and a best digital comic category. Now, I can tell some of you are already scratching your heads, but don't worry, even the judges of the Eisner Awards themselves are sometimes confused by the distinction. Now, the confusion has something to do with the name, I bet, because webcomics are digital comics, and digital comics are delivered via the web. So I can understand why sometimes the two categories blur a little bit. If I had to sum up the distinction between webcomic and digital comic in, you know, one sentence, I would say... Web comics are online and digital comics are offline. But that distinction hasn't stopped digital comics from getting nominated very recently in the webcomic category and web comics getting nominated very recently in the digital comic category. The Eisner Awards originally had one online comic category and that was called Best Digital Comic and that started back in 2005. And that lasted for a few years until it became Best Digital slash Web Comic. And then in 2017, webcomic and digital comics got their own distinct categories. But again, there's been some blending of those two categories since then. So how do the ISOs select their nominees? They've got a panel of five or six judges who read everything. Now, I know what you're thinking. They read everything, every webcomic, every comic book, every graphic novel, every periodical. No, they don't. Because the awards have a submission process where publishers and creators are able to submit their works for consideration by those judges. And that creates a much smaller subset. There might be a bazillion things that came out in the last year, but if only half a bazillion are submitted, that cuts down on the amount of reading that the judges have to do. But they do read everything that's submitted. It gets sent to us. And when I was a judge in 2005, I received a ton of links. I received a ton of books. And I went through each one of them. Now, you know pretty quickly whether or not a book is one of the top 100 in your mind of a given year because you get to page three and you're like, this isn't grabbing me, or the artwork's not so great, or hey, there's 18 typos on page one. And those sorts of things kind of winnow their way out if they don't really grab you. But that doesn't mean you don't get into a room with the other judges and suddenly they're saying, this is the greatest thing ever. If you get past page five, you're really going to fall in love with it. And that's what it became. It became a thing where we all would read everything that was sent to us and we would enthusiastically get together and in a room, a hotel room that was a big panel room or something like that, where all the submissions were, copies of everything were there and we would just dig into them. So things we had read, things that came in at the last minute, uh, maybe something we hadn't quite gotten around to but we meant to get to and we'd go through every single thing. And then from that list, we come up with the nominees. Each item, each book, each webcomic is voted on, the votes are tallied, and the ones that got the most votes become the nominees. Once those nominations are selected, comics professionals are invited to vote, and they vote online through an online system. 
Then the winners are announced at the San Diego Comic-Con at Comic-Con International. The big takeaway from this for us as cartoonists is submit our work because here's why I submitted my work. I never ever think that I'm gonna get a nomination or heck, even win one of these things. But I want people to read my comic and I know that if I send this in, at least six people who probably have never heard of who I am will read my comic. I know that's a really silly reason to submit, but it doesn't cost anything to submit and I really caution people against ever submitting for awards that require you to pay. But I just wanted six more readers. And so that's why, that's honestly why I submit every year is that I would like the panel of judges to read my work. The next awards are the NCS awards or the Rubin Awards. The NCS is the National Cartoonist Society. It's probably the oldest professional cartooning organization anywhere. And they've been giving awards out since 1946. So they are the granddaddy on this list. The Reuben gets its name from Rube Goldberg, so if you've ever seen any of those cartoon contraptions where a boot knocks over an egg which falls into the frying pan which does the ba 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 that's a Rube Goldberg drawing and that's where these awards get their name. A little confusion about the name. The Reuben Award is technically a single award that is given to one cartoonist every year, the person who is decided as the best cartoonist of the year. All the other awards from the NCS are the division awards, so each subset of comic strips or illustration or greeting cards, things like that, wherever cartooning is used. The NCS Division Awards have two categories for their online comics. One is short form and one is long form. Short form are for like gag comics, short comics, but I think even standalone single installment comics, like I think the oatmeal counts as a short form comic because it's not a continuing narrative. And, you know, Garfield and PVP and Cyanide and Happiness are all perfect examples of short form. Then there's a long form comics, which the ideal one would be Prince Valiant and The Middle Age and Lore Olympus, things like that. Now the NCS nomination process is unlike all the others. They have a single voting period where every member of the NCS votes. Now all the members don't vote in every category. Each one of the regional parts of the NCS votes on a few categories. Like I'm in the Central Florida NCS chapter, and we voted on two categories, I think, this year. So I'm, you know, I've submitted my webcomic in the online comic long form category, but we didn't vote on that. The NCS awards are unique in that there's only a single voting period where members of the NCS vote on the nominees. And I t let me say that differently. They vote on the winner. And then the NCS doesn't say who the winner is, but they say, here are the top three vote getters. They know when they announce the nominees who won, because there's not going to be a second set of votes. They just say, here are the nominees. And then on their event weekend, usually NCS Fest or the Rubin weekend, they will announce who the winner was. So it's a little weird that they're called nominees. They're really finalists or something. I don't know. It's, a, it's an odd system. It's a, you, totally unique, but that's how they do it. Anybody can submit their comic for consideration by the NCS, but only NCS members can vote. And they are a little different in that you don't send them a link to your webcomic. Usually you send them a PDF with eight sample pages, episodes, installments of your webcomic. So it's a little weird, but uh, I think it just makes it easier for them to vote on it because I think they send the PDFs out to everybody, or at least when I saw it, they actually assembled them all into one huge PDF that you would review. So it kind of made it easier for the jurying process for each person to say, okay, I've actually read everything. And you get to say, here are my eight favorite pages. Here are my eight favorite episodes. And that's kind of cool. Now I'm going to include the Harvey Awards here, even though they don't have a publicly available submission process for cartoonists. The Harvey Awards have been running for as long as the Eisners have, but they've been a bit more nomadic. They've been moving from convention to convention to convention. I think the last and maybe longest stint they had was at the Baltimore Comic-Con. And now they are at the New York Comic-Con and they sort of reinvented themselves when they got to New York. The Harvey Awards used to have a best webcomic category, but following their reinvention, they replaced that with a best digital book of the year category. But just because it says books in the title doesn't mean webcomics can't get nominated. And in fact, a webcomic won in 2020, Fried Rice by Erica Eng. Again, the tricky bit with the Harveys is that there's no real way to submit your webcomics. Their format and their rules are fairly opaque at the moment. They say there's a blue ribbon panel of experts or some such who create their nominations list, and then they open up voting to professional comics creators 
as determined by the New York Comic Con. But no submission process is available on their website. Maybe that will change, but uh, I'm including it on this list mostly out of tradition and because webcomics still get nominated in it, and uh, great webcomics at that. Next up is the Ignatz Awards, which is a festival prize given out at the Small Press Expo, or SPX, which takes place in Bethesda, Maryland every year. The Ignatz Awards get their name from the mouse in the Crazy Cat comic strip by George Harriman, and the Ignatz Awards were the first awards to recognize webcomics way back in 2001. The nominees are selected by a jury whose identities are kept secret until the nominations are announced, which I think is a cool thing. And once the nominations are announced, the nominees are voted on by the attendees of the Small Press Expo. So if you attend that event as a fan or a guest or as an exhibitor, you vote while you're there. And anyone can submit their work for consideration via their website. And lastly, the Ringo Awards. These are the newest awards and they're part of the Baltimore Comic Con, which I love. These awards take their name from the late, great Mike Waringo, who passed way too soon. Mike's work was lovely, fun, bright, spirited, and the awards try to capture that energy. The Ringo nominations are interesting in that the nominees are made up of selections from a jury of comics professionals and experts, and also by voting from the public who vote online. And those two things combine together to create the nominees in each category. And they don't say which was which. So they just say, here are the five nominees. They don't try to create a tiered system of here are the ones selected by the jury and here are the ones selected by the people. So I think that's a, that's a fun system. Once the nominations are announced, voting then becomes open to the professional comic community. So the Ringos are interesting in that there's two ways for you to have your work considered. You can submit it for consideration by the jury, or you can go online and vote for it yourself and encourage your readers to vote for you. And I think it's because of the online component that the Webtoons comics have had such a big presence in the Ringo Awards. I think when you have that many people voting online and Webtoons has such a huge online audience that it's easy for them to mobilize the people who are already online to go vote, which is nice. Now, a little disclaimer, I've been involved in most of these awards in one fashion or another. Back in 2005, I was an Eisner judge and I wrote the proposal which got webcomics added to the ballot for the first time. I presented the very first Harvey Award for webcomics. I wrote the uh, initial rules for having a webcomic in the Ignatz Awards at SPX. <laughs> I wrote the first draft of all the rules for the Ringo Awards. And uh, for the NCS Awards, I vote in my local chapter. So I'm involved in all of these. I felt like this is a subject that I have some experience at. I hope this overview helps you get your webcomic submitted and maybe recognized in the future, which would be awesome. If you like this video, please consider hitting the subscribe button, maybe clicking the like button, the notification bell, and maybe even checking out my Patreon page at patreon.com slash Steve Conley. But now, time for a shout out. Our very first shout out goes to Wayfaring Stars by Acoustic Eel. Here's the description from Webtoons. Jesse's plan is simple. Come home to her wife, Leah. Avoid the deadly rubiginose of fungus. Live happily ever after. But the galaxy has other ideas. With only hope and a stolen spaceship to guide her, she'll have to journey through the furthest reaches of space, facing the wrath of queens and monsters, and finding a family along the way. That's awesome. That's a good description of the series. I think this is a lovely comic strip. I think the uh, title artwork is beautiful. The, the cover image is great. Uh, only 82 subscribers. This comic strip needs more love. I uh, hope you check it out. Give it some love. Again, it's called Wayfaring Stars by Acoustic Eel over on Webtoons. Link in the doobly-doo below. If you'd like to have your comic given a shout out here, please send me an email to steve at webcomicshoptalk.com. Let me know the link to your webcomic, your pronouns, that will help. And uh, I will try to give you a shout out. I can't do more than one uh, episode, but uh, I'll do my best to help spread the word and get readers your way. Uh, I'll be favoring comics with not too many subscribers in an effort to kind of help give them the boost and some more love. So that's it. That's all. It's all about the love. Uh, I hope you and yours are safe and well, and I will see you online.